Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, then please do not continue to listen until after you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. You will notice that Jess is in a little bit different of a setting for those watching our video podcast. And for those listening to the audio, don't forget you can go to our YouTube channel and see the raw um, video footage and audio footage of the podcast. The audio version is after I've Ported. edited it. Yeah. <laughs> but. Yes. So we've moved. I've moved. We're still in the process of unpacking <laughs> all the things. Points to box. So it's it's a bit messy, but uh, we're we're here. It took a week. <laughs> Everything hurts, <laughs> but we made it. <laughs> so we've moved like half an hour away. So it's it's good. We're in a house with uh, some family while we're trying to figure out where our final move will be to and saving up and all that home ownership is great yeah. <laughs> especially for millennials oh yes it's a trip for sure but it can be worth it for sure it can be it's scary but it can be worth it so we're in the middle of that guy so don't mind the <laughs> the disarray Impossible interruptions once yeah, in a while. Impossible interruptions, but <laughs> this is fine. Everything's fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> yes. But, uh. So we're watching Bad Ben. Batter. Batter Ben. Today. Yes. The. <laughs> technically the sequel to Bad Ben, but it's not the second movie that came out after Bad it's Ben. Chronologically, what happened next? Yes. The prequel, which we may or may not be covering is called Steelmanville road, which is anyways, I, I won't even touch on that. Anyways, T. So uh, since the weather, well, since my body hates the weather, not only am I struggling with uh, allergies for the past month, but I've also been struggling with arthritis. So I am drinking my good old turmeric rescue tea. <laughs> Uh, it's it's just a plain turmeric tea by uh, traditional medicinals. So, so I am drinking Hawaiian islands Ooh. or Hawaiian island teas, um, passion fruit black tea. Oh, the last one I had too. That, that sounds tea. delicious. It's it delicious. I got it as a gift from my brother and sister in law, and it's delicious. But there's a gas stove here so i boiled the water and it's currently hellfire <laughs> in a cup so we'll see if uh we'll be drinking that eventually today <laughs> eventually yes <laughs> so batter ben pretty straightforward summary these paranormal investigators uh find footage that Tom Riley actually did not die, that he survived, but he kind of went under the radar. He, like, grew a mustache and started, like, wearing hats. What did I say? Out of the radar. Oh, off the radar. Same thing. <laughs> um, Same thing. <laughs> he was living in a tent. <laughs> yes, in the woods. But anyway, so they're like, Tom Riley, come, we'll pay you. If you come to the house that you almost died in, and he's like, I'm just doing it for the money, and he is milking it. It is great. But anyways, the, of course, the one of the paranormal investigators is a medium, and she's trying to contact the bad Ben spirit, and then find out finds out that there's a demon, and things go awry, and... Tom Riley ends up having to rescue the paranormal investigators and actually ends up kind of cleansing, kind of cleansing the house. And at the end, he's like, I'm, I'm going to become a paranormal investigator, too. 
It just, oh my god. Yeah. I did find it hilarious. Uh, the medium at one point said that she doesn't sense bad Ben, which she kind of explained it as it is a living creature, but has demonic abilities. But she didn't sense him there. So later in the movie, <laughs> they had called Bad Ben to the area. We'll get to that. <laughs> but Tom ended up pitting the demonic entities against each mm-hmm. other. <laughs> Demon versus Bad Ben. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> uh, oh, keep being random. Itchies. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Um, the troubles of headsets. I know. It's like, as soon as my ears are covered, they're like, you must itch now. <laughs> right. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a, a really intense itch that you just can't, can't <laughs> help but scratch it. Yep. So, entertainment scale. This one is kind of difficult for me because I don't. I don't like it as much as the original, but for me, it's a lot more entertaining. There's a lot more parts where I'm laughing, but it is a lot weaker of a movie. So I'm going to give it a 6.5. I'm going to give it, I give the last one a 6.5 and you're right. This one is not as good. It's, there's like almost no scares whatsoever. Yeah. And the scares that are in the movie, I laugh at. <laughs> like they're they're not scary at all. They're more just sad or they're like horrible CG. Yeah. Or they're just ooh, there's a shape. Like <laughs> with glowing eyes. Like that one did kind of get me though. Honestly, the one with the glowing eyes, I can only see the thing from Star Wars. (laughs) One of the traitor guys. Oh, yeah. From Star Wars. That's all I can see. That is the only thing I can see. And I'm just waiting for it to do the the alien language, (laughs) asking them about the droids and all, and I can't. So (laughs) I would give this one a 5.5. I feel like the act, his acting is still fairly stiff. Yeah. And there's a lot of overacting on everybody's parts. Yeah. <laughs> like at one point, the director touches Tom Riley on his back. It's kind of toward the beginning of the movie. And he like throws himself down. <laughs> and really, it was kind of like the athletes that overact when someone bumps into them. The only thing that was missing was him like gripping his shin and rolling around (laughs) on the ground. Like (laughs) really? (laughs) Yeah. The, the acting's pretty over the top. Like even the, the paid actors are very over the top. Yeah. Really the, the only one that really comes closest in my opinion is like the director. Yeah. Yeah, he's and the he's only one. Kinda... <laughs> yeah, he's the only one that's not like screaming their lungs out and Yeah. Yeah, like the medium is probably the worst part. It's like I feel bad cuz I'm I'm sure she's probably told to do it that way. But it yeah, it it just made the movie come out way cheesier. Then if she had if she had just turned it down a few notches, like yes, do a scream, but don't freaking rip out your lungs to where we can hear the mic yeah. trying to crackle. Well, especially in like the scene where she gets her hand bit. Yeah, that was like <laughs> that was a little overdone. But also, she has a bandage for the next couple scenes. But after that, there's no bandage and there's no bite mark. Yeah, like, there's no continuity there. Yeah. Pick one. Yeah, like, this movie is kind of a mess. But I don't know. I I don't regret uh, watching it. Like, this is my third time watching it. And it still uh, still cracks me up. Like, especially in the very beginning when he's like, 
I did it just for the money. And then towards the end when he's talking smack about the paranormal investigators and then the very ending scene where he's a paranormal investigator and he's reviewing this footage. That is the best. That is my favorite scene out of the entire movie. Is at the very, very end of the credits when he sees an email after he put out his ad about being a paranormal investigator, and this couple is asking for help, and you see like his thoughts, I guess, in text on the side. Yeah, there's something behind you. Dude, no, seriously, it's coming from behind you. <laughs> WTF, in all caps, WTF. <laughs> and then just delete. <laughs> yeah, he just deletes the footage because I'm not helping these guys. Nope. <laughs> That's nope. Oh. <laughs> like, this is a great movie to have, like, a, a bad movie party, too. Yes. Because it, it's just entertaining enough that you can, like, make fun of it. Yes. But as far as, like, a, a legitimately good movie, no. No, 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 no. No, it's it's definitely a, a lower-end movie for sure. If you go into it with high expectations and all, they're going to be dashed on the rocks and <laughs> just shipwrecked immediately. But especially with the CGI. Oh, my God, the CGI for bad bit. The oversized clown looking demon just no. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so strange because, like, in the very first movie, he tries to be a lot more serious. But, like, in this movie, yeah, there's a few scenes where he tries to be more s- scary. But I got the feeling he's trying to be a lot more comedic, too. Like, there were a lot of scenes that just at least make you chuckle. Yeah. And so it's like, that's why it's just, it's hard to compare the two. Because on the one hand, if you're trying to go into a very serious movie, then yeah, this one's not for you. But if you're just looking for a bad movie that's entertaining that you can laugh at, like, I, I feel like this is totally worth at least one watch. At least. It is funny. It's, it's not scary. At all. The first one was scarier, to be fair. Yeah, for sure. And that one had far less effects. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But this one, it's not scary, but it is entertaining. It is really funny to watch. Mm-hmm. So, I don't really have anything more to say entertainment-wise. It's, it's just kind of one of those eh movies. Like, it's all right, and I'd watch it again, maybe. But it wouldn't be, like, the first one I'd grab. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. So, realism. This movie is so strange because I was commenting this to Jess during the movie. It's like a your typical felon footage paranormal movie, but with one guy that actually acts kind of realistically while everyone else is like, let's go check out the thing. And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we not do that? <laughs> yeah, like, this is, I don't know. It. I think I am going to give it, like, a two. Just, it's so, it, just the movie itself just breaks reality in so many different ways. And then the, uh, out being out of consistency, that's going to impact the realism. It's like, in my head, I'm like, it feels like a two, but I can't distinguish Exactly. Hmm. So, I know I gave, like, the last one a two. Mainly because he was a, a guy trying to flip a house and sell it, and he was just doing everything wrong. But, <laughs> I, I mean, that's what we did. This one, I feel the interactions and a lot of the dialogue itself though overdone, was fairly realistic. Yeah, that's fair. I feel like the situation all is fairly realistic. You have to really set aside, like, the effects and everything, because... No. Like, even the face that shows up in the window, the green face... Oh my god. ...is, like, five times bigger than it should be. 
So, like, <laughs> you have to set aside some of it. And the fact that there's a large living thing in the forest with demonic powers. Cryptids. <laughs> But the dialogue between them, like the director really wanting the footage, he's like, you know what? I can't condone you breaking and entering because I'm your boss, but this is really good stuff. <laughs> like That kind of, I can see that happening. Yeah. And the, the one person in the group that's like, I'm doing this <laughs> and keeps driving them, even though they know it's a bad idea and it's a bad situation, they're so stupid stubborn and into it that they're like oh, we're doing this we're already in it let's do it and everybody else is like but why though <laughs> and the guy that they had to bribe to go back to the house that he almost died in <laughs> <laughs> i could easily see him milking it for more like he did again stiff acting and overacting but I can see him milking the situation and trying to get every last bit that he can out of it. So when they like give him the iPod and <laughs> they buy him all the stuff and they, he's like, oh, it's from Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for JCPenney. And she's like, I will buy you a JCPenney after this. <laughs> so I can see that kind of thing happening. And when she asks him why are you here again? And he's like, I'm doing it because you're paying me. That's accurate. Yeah. No lies. And with him like constantly swearing because that's just who he is. Yeah. And they're like, and stop swearing. In the situation. Yeah. And they're like, we can't have you swearing. <laughs> Every other sentence. And he's like, are you showing this in a church? <laughs> I can see interactions like that happening. Yeah. So I would give it a three for that. Just a little bit higher. But everything else. <laughs> I can't really give it higher than that. I can't. <laughs> well, see, like, the whole medium, like, trying to talk to the people in the house and then figuring out it's a demon... I don't know. Normally, they can kind of going based off of movie logic, not real life mm -hmm. paranormal investigators. They in the movies they tend to be like, "Oh, we can sense that this is probably a demonic presence." A lot like, sooner <laughs> than her getting possessed and being like, "I pissed it off." And just <laughs> it's like, "I'm sorry, you're a really bad medium." <laughs> Well, it was also extremely convenient. I don't know if they started out with the intention of her revealing that she's a medium or not. Because at first, it was just, she's a paranormal investigator. Like she's In the beginning. Screen, she I'm was an investigator. She didn't really mention that she was a medium until a lot later. I'm pretty sure... After she introduced her... I don't know. I'd have to look. Uh, go back and... Look, but it was later when they when she sat him down was like, I'm a medium. I do this. I'm a professional. Oh. It's like, Are you though? those professionals don't have to say they're professional. Well, OK, one thing that really killed the realism was the freaking cameraman. Yes. <laughs> God. OK, real cameramen don't have to be told five times throughout the movie get the camera get the camera that camera is glued to them you have to pry that camera from their cold dead hands yeah and don't you dare touch their camera <laughs> yeah and then even when he was told to bring it he would still set it up like above them and then he'd go down with them it's like you're the cameraman why are you doing the investigating with them you're supposed to document everything that's the whole point of view but it was kind of funny how much she would shit on him <laughs> she's like schmitty you're an idiot <laughs> I love like, that bit toward the end he's like i don't even know why they call me schmitty that's not even my real name <laughs> and he's like i'm a human being <laughs> And then right afterwards, she's like, you're an idiot. <laughs> like, 
Oh, man. Well, it's a very hostile work environment. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, man. Let's see if this is still hellfire or not. Okay, I think it's I think it's suitable now. The moment of truth. Don't die. <laughs> okay. Yay. <laughs> yes. Just that little bit of tart that gets you right back here. <laughs> Ooh. Love it. Hi. Hi, Katie. She was enjoying the sun and now she's come to bother me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, with for me on the realism, with the first movie, you could attribute him not doing stuff because he's an idiot and he doesn't know what he's doing, while with this one, none of the um, like they pretend to know what they're doing, but none of them really know what they're doing. Uh, so I think that's why in my head it kind of cl uh, conglomerates and becomes a little bit lesser on the realism. But yeah, you could argue that. Um, I mean, it's like I could see that situation as a, a general sense, but whenever I get into the specifics on what they actually did in the movie, I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there weren't many interactions in the first movie, but I feel like the interactions in this one were a bit more realistic. Yeah. Than the few that we had seen in the first one. Yeah. That's why I gave it a slightly higher rating. Again, one point higher. <laughs> And that's all it will get from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us, the, uh, man, I can't talk today. Tell us, guys, what you thought about Batter Ben. If you want to keep going down the rabbit hole that is the Bad Ben series, or if you've had enough and you're never going to touch it again, let us know on the realism. Did you think that the paranormal investigators seem to be acting reasonable or if they were being crazy like uh like we think that they were they they were in oh, all over a their heads. Mixture of both. Yes. Yes. So, let us know what you guys thought. If you have any requests that you would like of other movies, you would like us to watch and review please feel free to let us know those as well. And we will be having our live stream soon. Yes. I believe this move, I've lost track of time. I don't know what year it is anymore. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll be having that soon. So be on the lookout for those. Those are on the first weekend of every month. And we do let you guys know what we'll be playing. And we always stream that starting at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Twitch. Yes, and but we did start streaming on YouTube. We figured out the magic of the interwebs on how to stream to two places at once. Oh my goodness! Oh, we were at first, but we yeah. got it. <laughs> yeah, this is fine. Totally fine. We're professionals. <laughs> uh. Remember, guys, an alpha doesn't have to tell you they're an alpha if they tell you. That they're an alpha, they're a beta. But until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye.